Our top story this hour, the year-long detention of Wall Street Journal Evan Gershkovich, jailed by Russia while doing his job as a journalist. The Wall Street Journal leaving most of its front page blank today to honor Gershkovich and mark a year of what it calls as stolen stories, stolen joys, and stolen stories. Tonight, President Biden is vowing to continue working every day to secure Gershkovich's release and the release of all Americans held hostage or wrongfully detained abroad, adding, and I'm quoting now, we are with you and we will never stop working to bring you home. CNN's Fred Pleitkin has more now on Gershkovich's imprisonment and his fight for freedom. No media allowed at Evan Gershkovich's most recent court hearing in Moscow, just this short clip by the court's press service. Despite a year in a Russian jail, a defiant smile from the Wall Street Journal reporter. No surprise, his detention was extended yet again through June 30th. The U.S. ambassador to Russia ripping into the verdict. The accusations against Evan are categorically untrue. They are not a different interpretation of circumstances. They are fiction. Evan Gershkovich was arrested and charged with espionage a year ago while on assignment in Yekaterinburg, central Russia. I do not know if there are any other cases, but the allegations made by our intelligence services today were not related to his journalism. The Wall Street Journal and Gershkovich's family strongly deny the allegations. Paulina Ivanova of the Financial Times is one of Evan's best friends and still keeps in regular contact with him, writing letters. He's doing remarkably well. He's absolutely staying strong. He's not allowing himself to, you know, to wallow, to get too upset by everything. In fact, he spends most of his time in letters to us trying to make us feel better. Gershkovich faces a jail sentence of up to 20 years if convicted. But CNN has reported that Gershkovich and former U.S. Marine Paul Whelan were part of a proposed prisoner swap with a now-dead opposition leader, Alexei Navalny. <laughs> the Russian president taunted on his re-election day that he approved a swap on the condition he'd get back a high-profile Russian intelligence officer in prison for murder in Germany, Vadim Krasikov. The person who spoke to me had not finished his sentence yet. I said I agree, but unfortunately, what happened, happened. For those close to Evan, that means the waiting continues, outcome uncertain. When you see Putin talk about it and in you know very clear terms that this is what they want to see happen, that, that they are looking for a deal, you know, it just gives you hope that at some point this will, this, you know, that he will be home. He needs to be home. He needs to be back with his family, with his friends. And you know, Wolf, the Kremlin has once again confirmed that there are contacts between the United States and Russia on a possible prisoner swap. But they also say these kinds of talks need to happen in absolute silence or it could prevent results from happening. Wolf? All right, Fred Plattkin reporting for us. Thank you very much, Fred. And joining us now, Polina Ivanova and Pyotr Sauer. They're very close friends with Evan Gershkovich and fellow journalists who also reported alongside Evan in Russia before his detention. Polina and Piotr, thank you so much for being here. Our hearts go out to your good friend, uh, Evan. Let's hope uh, we're all together with him sooner rather than later. Polina, you've said that Evan's detention by the Russians was a watershed moment in Russia's increasingly brutal crackdown. What does Evan's detention represent at this very solemn one-year mark? I mean, the most important thing is that it represents 365 days that Evan has spent cut off from his family, from his friends, from doing the job that he loves to do. He's been in isolation for all of that time with so little contact with the outside world. So that really is, is the main thing that it represents for me. But it also, you know, for us, it's, it's 365 days without our best friend, um, without our colleague, you know, someone that we've always relied on and love very dearly. And we haven't had him around, and he needs to be home. He certainly does need to be home as, uh, immediately. Piotr, a year ago, you were actually texting with Evan about Arsenal, the English soccer team you both love. When he mm. stopped responding to you, mm. you knew something was wrong. Now you write to him, updating him on Arsenal's games from prison. Can you tell us more about your conversations with Evan? Yes, yeah, so um, Evan and I send each other letters uh, every week um, through the Russian prison service. 
Um, Evan is very curious uh, how, how we're doing, and of course we want to know how he's doing uh, in there. Uh, we talk a lot about Arsenal, the, the team we both love, uh, and this season Arsenal is actually doing really well. So uh, it's a bittersweet moment for him because he's happy for the team. At the same time, he's upset, of course, that he can't see it for himself. Uh, but those letters, they give me strength, and I, I think they give him strength as well. Let's hope it does give him strength. Paulina, you also have exchanged letters with Evan uh, over this past year, and I know he actually managed to send you some flowers for your birthday. You just heard from him last yeah. week. Can you share, Paulina, a little bit more about what he said and how he is coping? Well, one thing we don't talk about is Arsenal. I'm afraid I don't know anything about that. But um, he's, he's doing really well. Um, remarkable, considering the circumstances. He's so strong. He's very resilient. And, um, you know, he writes about how he's doing, the books he's reading, the schedule that he keeps, his routine, and just, you know, how he keeps himself, you know, together and, and despite the isolation and how, um, you know, far removed he is from all of us. We try and um, entertain him, try and um, distract him with some gossip here or describing um, what we're doing with our lives. One of the things that he really enjoys is when, um, you know, we'll all go to an event together, all of his friends, and then we'll all describe the same event from different perspectives. And then he gets kind of this whole, you know, 360 vision of something that he's missed out on, but um, makes him feel like maybe he was there. He sounds as if he's like he's such a wonderful, wonderful 32 year old man. Uh, I know you guys miss him uh, very, very much. Piotr, talk to us a little bit more about Evan's spirit while he's in this notoriously harsh Russian prison. Mm. Yes, yeah, uh, he's keeping up remarkably well, uh, given the, the incredibly difficult circumstances. He's inside his jail for 23 hours a day. He's got one hour a day that he can walk around in a tiny court cell uh, inside the jail as well. Um, but he keeps his spirits up. Uh, he tries to make a routine for himself. Uh, keeps both reading, you know, uh, mentally strong, but he also tries to keep physically strong by doing push-ups and sit-ups. Um, you know, I think he understood early on that it's important to have a routine. To, to By the end of the day, he wants to be tired uh, and feel like that he has done enough, um, uh, you know, to, to feel like his days aren't wasted. And I'm incredibly proud of, of how he's keeping in there, for sure. Yeah, good yeah, point. Uh, Paulina, yeah. the Kremlin says talks for a possible prisoner exchange are ongoing. Give us your analysis. I know you've done a lot of reporting on this. How does Putin, for example, view Evans' detention, and does he have any incentive to release him? I think he does. I mean, this is something that gives us hope um, that uh, Putin and other Russian officials speak about it very openly as something that, you know, this is a case where they hope to see or they, you know, and to, to work out a deal and, and do an exchange. You know, we've seen this kind of hostage diplomacy in the past. We've seen the detention of Brittany Griner, the exchange that happened after that. So we're just um, hopeful that things follow a similar path. Let's hope uh, indeed. Piotr, the top U.S. hostage affairs official, told CNN these next 90 days of Evans' detention are critical for mm. trying to work out a deal before his actual trial. Do you have hope, Piotr, that Evan could be freed in these next few months? Yes, we, we saw those comments, and they do give us hope. Um, just this week, the Kremlin also said that uh, talks are ongoing. Um, U.S. President Joe Biden today in a statement said that he will do everything to get Evan out. So we believe these 90 days are crucial, uh, and I really do hope, and we really hope that um, a deal will be made to get our friend back to where he belongs and also back to work. Um, you know, Evan is not just an incredibly per incredible person, he's an incredible journalist, and the world is missing out on his crucial reporting. Yeah, it's certainly. Yeah, he gave uh, an insight into true. wartime Russia, something that's so important. Yeah, good. Go Super ahead, Polina. Yeah, go ahead. No, just, um, yeah, just that it's the, the work that he was doing was important for all of us, for our understanding of Russia at a time of war, and really, you know, we owe him that, and we, we, we owe him uh, all the time that we can give to, to bring him home. Um, we were really uplifted by uh, Joe Biden's statement today that, um, you know, just once again shows that, um, that the president feels very um, personally connected, I think, to Evan's story. He spoke, he spoke in a statement about um, Evan's parents and his meeting with them. So, you know, that also gives us hope for, as you say, this really crucial period of 90 days. Yeah, I want to ask each of you, uh, what's your message to Evan right now? And Paulina, let me start with you. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah, oof. Um, 
it's hard. I mean, just that, you know, that we're here and that we're working as hard as we can. I know he knows that. Um, I know that he knows that he's not forgotten by all of us and all of you and everybody who's following his case. Um, so I just, you know, want to always remind him of that, that he's not alone in there. He certainly isn't alone. Uh, and Piotr, what's your message to Evan right now? Yeah, you know, Evan, just keep going. Um, the world knows you're innocent. Uh, we all know you're a journalist. Um, we also know what, what good of a friend you are. Um, and we will do everything. We'll never stop uh, working until you're out with us again here. We, have, of course, all of us uh, stand with Evan. He was doing his job as a journalist in Russia, a country he actually loved, loved the Russian culture, loved everything about mm -hmm. Russia. And all of a sudden, the Russian authorities detain him. And it's now been one year since he's been held in prison. Pyotr Sauer, Polina uh, Ivanova, to both of you, thank you very much. When you're in contact uh, through the letters with Evan, please pass along our best wishes to him on behalf of all of our viewers here in the United States and around the world. Thanks to both of you.